The February dry spell is at its peak, and northern Uganda gets the worst of its baking temperatures. This is what is left of a fish pond in Balonio area in northern Uganda. Like many parts of rural Uganda, northern Uganda continues to face the cross-cutting effects of poor water access. The pictures get blinker in communities with high population density. Concerned about this situation in northern Uganda, the Rotary community in Uganda and around the world conceptualized the project for the supply of clean water, sanitation, hygiene improvement, energy and economic empowerment in Balonyo and Aloy in northern Uganda. The choice for Balonyo as one of the beneficiary communities was spot on. During the 27 years of the Joseph Konye civil war that ravaged northern Uganda, Balonyo witnessed the most brutal massacre when over 300 people were killed in one day. The other choice beneficiary community was Aloy, an area that equally suffered during the insurgency. The need of that area will take a long time to uh, to, to, to be really uh, to bring those people to the level of uh, other parts of the country. So it was natural for Rotary to pick on that area. They don't have water. Sanitation is at its worst. You have so many children dropping out of school. So it was natural for us to go in and try to do something. This project's intervention target all the six priority sectors of Rotary Foundation. Promoting peace, fighting disease, providing clean water, saving mothers and children, supporting education, and growing local economies. At Bologna, the intervention was structured around two institutions, Bologna Technical and Vocation Institute, which has an enrollment of 280 students, and Balonio Early Child Development Center with an enrollment of 320 children. The community surrounding both institutions with a population of 2,000 was the other targeted beneficiary. The second project site is centered around Aloy Senior Secondary School and Aloy Primary School and the surrounding community with a population of about 4,000. In both areas, water, sanitation, and waste management conditions posed a risk to the community. These people had a challenge, and a challenge was one of it is that they were displaced and they were in camps. After being displaced, they came back home, and the sanitation situation wasn't good. With the help of Rotary Foundation and the Rotary Fraternity in Canada, USA, and Uganda, the 450,000 US dollar wash project rolled out. The Rotary Club of Oakville, Trafalgar, in Ontario, Canada, as the primary international sponsor, and the Rotary Clubs of Kampala and Lira in Uganda as co primary hosts. Under the project, two solar powered water supply systems were constructed at Balonio and Aloy. The systems are backed up by water harvesting tanks. This assures the four learning centers a regular supply of water. The lack of clean drinking water is the source of so many problems, health problems. So, so when you provide the water, you don't only provide in the need to use water to drink, but you are indirectly assisting people to live healthy. We don't have any water problem because one thing is that we have uh, three water ponds for the students. We have one for girls, we have one for the kitchen and one for the boys. So we have just what is even more than enough. In the dry season, while the fish ponds elsewhere are in disastrous state, the one operated by Balonio Technical and Vocational Institute flourishes because it has an endless supply of water from the water system built under the WASH project. We now have a fresh water source which can really help the community. It is also helping us in 
restructuring our uh, fish pond. The assurance of continuous flow of water has enabled the institutions to establish tree seedling nurseries and plantations. We are using that water source also in our nursery beds, which is really making uh, the life at least to go on well. The community surrounding both schools has been catered for. The project ensured that the system has stand pipes accessible for them. In Uganda, the average access to improved sanitation in rural households is at only 58%. In schools, the people to latrine ratio declined to 66 to 1 from 54 to 1, with boys and girls sharing. Under the project, blocks of water closet toilets were built. Today, each gender has its own facilities. Each of the project sites had a biogas system constructed. The system uses fecal material from toilets to generate biogas that is used in the kitchens. This has drastically reduced the energy expenses at the schools. We were using firewood uh, to prepare food for our, ch our children here, but now that uh, the biogas is working, we are benefiting a lot from it. In the first place, it has saved us uh, fuel-wise. Now we can use little firewood we don't spend much money as we used to do in terms of buying firewood. One of the other highlights of the projects was the 24 school-led total sanitation sessions that were conducted. The sessions saw students sensitize on sanitation and hygienic best practices. Most of the girls, they have been absenting themselves or they dropped out of the school because of the what? The menstrual hygiene. When I teach them how to manage their menstruation hygiene. It means that he or she will know how to manage herself and be in the school. At all the schools that have benefited from the WASH project, poetry has been composed to deepen an appreciation of the program. At a low secondary school, it is a poem. While at Aloy Primary School, it is a song on hygiene. Sanitation, sanitation is our health. 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 All Ugandans, let's support it. The message of good hygienic practices is gradually being adopted by the communities in Aloy and Bologna. The awareness has been conducted by the local government officials through mass media messaging on radio and face-to-face -face interventions. Here, district health assistants are conducting a spot check on beneficiaries' homes to assess adoptation. <laughs> Some of the impact assessment visits in the communities are attended by Rotarians. As we know, 80% of the cases reported in facilities are preventable. So if we can prevent them right from home, then we reduce queuing in the facility.
This group of residents of Aloy meets every Tuesday. At each meeting, like it is today, one by one members are called forth to contribute their savings or repay money borrowed. This is one of the 12 saving groups that are benefiting from a $25,000 microcredit fund under this WASH project. With an initial loan of $90, 30-year-old Bernard Ogwang, father of three, launched his business where he buys and sells cattle. Yeah, they are working with us very, very good because they have to give us small interest. That is, I'm not saying that is one is an interest because 2%, like the first one I borrowed 300,000 and I paid it. I repaid after six months. I paid with only 36 interest. That is not interest to me because it is very small. Just, they are just helping us. 41-year-old Grace Otim has used borrowings from the fund to start her business and pay fees for her children. The improvements in the lives of the beneficiaries of microcredit fund are evident in the communities of Aloy and Balon. This is attracting new people. So this group, is, we have started with only 20 members. And later on, we will proceed to 44. And the third one, we have proceed to 78. And currently, we, we have registered 150 members who are willing to get a loan. Esther Mary Apoy is the loan officer working at Okenyero Kenwa Cooperative Society Limited, the microfinance company that is managing the microcredit fund. People are saying, ah, this, this money has worked so well. Now I can raise some little profit out of my business, put it aside to pay my children's school fees, to cater for their medical expenses. And some, they've, they've, some have bought bicycles before they don't have it. Others are now upgrading. Even that, that one there, he has added it and bought a fridge. So he can now sell things that people can buy. Edward O'Quill, a progressive farmer in Aloy, to us, his two-year-old eucalyptus trees plantation. The tree planting component under WASH project has a revolving fund that provides the communities with an opportunity to venture into afforestation as a business. Well, the tree given to me by Rotary, uh, first of all, I want to maintain it. You see this money they collected, I think, to come and support us. So I, I see that thing is, is an opportunity which I have to manage properly. Because if I manage it, personally, I will have to benefit. I will have to earn something after you. In March 2017, this Rotary project came to its end. Regardless, work continues to ensure that the project investments do not break down and fall into disuse. A team of volunteers from the benefiting communities are taking care of this. Rotary Community Corps and Water Use Committees for each village were trained in maintenance and repair of all mechanical components. We have trained people so that they can accept the new technology, so to say. For the Rotary Fraternity, funding the project was in fulfillment of their tagline, Service Above Self. But what they did was giving hope for the hundreds of families that previously lived in hopelessness in Aloy and Bologna. For them now, there's light at the end of the tunnel.